Hello, and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be comparing three generations of the 16-inch Apple Silicon MacBook Pros, the M1 Max, the M2 Max, and the current generation M3 Max. Each of these laptops is the top spec of its generation, and I'm going to be comparing all three of them in some real-world tests, including Blender, After Effects, Adobe Dimensions, and Final Cut Pro. First up, I'll be starting off with Blender and testing the Cycles renderer with the demo classroom file. I ran through two versions of this test. One was a fresh load of the file so the kernels weren't preloaded, and the second was a second render after the kernels had already been preloaded. These GPU renders really seem to be where the new M3 Max really shines as it's a little over twice as fast as the M1 Max and about 30 seconds faster than the M2 Max. The second run through of this test, however, tells a very different story. As with the kernels preloaded, the GPU in the M3 Max really gets its chance to wipe the floor with the other two, as the M3 Max does an impressive 18 seconds up against the M2 Max's 43 seconds and the M1 Max's 1 minute and 21 seconds. To put this into perspective, my RTX 3090 in my PC renders this exact scene in 12 seconds. I'm actually really impressed. So impressed, in fact, that I would actually consider using the M3 MacBook as a way to render out some clips as opposed to only doing it when I absolutely needed to, as I did with the M1 and M2 Max. Switching over to the EV renderer, the playback is pretty smooth on all three devices, and I really didn't notice anything skipping frames or locking up. In fact, working with animation in general is a very pleasant experience on all three. However, when it comes to rendering out the animation, the M3 Max continues its domination over the other two with a very impressive 25 seconds versus 38 seconds with the M2 Max and coming in quite a bit later, the M1 Max at 57 seconds. Whether using EV or Cycles, the comparison between the three machines is pretty much the same and that is the M3 is a little bit faster than the M2 Max but the M3 Max is almost twice as fast in every test than the M1 Max was. So to sum up the Blender test I would say that if you're going to do the creation on the laptop and then take the file to a more powerful machine to do the rendering then I would say you couldn't go wrong with any of these three machines. However, if you want an all-in-one solution that is going to be the tool that you use to create and render, then it's really hard for me to suggest anything other than the M3 Max. Switching over to motion graphics and After Effects, the story here is quite a bit different as the M3 Max seems to dominate in every category. While playing on the timeline, the Frames per second isn't real time on any of the machines, however the frames per second that you can view your project on the M3 Max is pretty close to double the other two. Everything in After Effects just feels smoother, and the more complicated the project gets, the further ahead the M3 Max pulls in terms of overall performance in the timeline. The performance definitely carries over to the rendering of projects as the M3 Max absolutely destroys the other two coming in at 3 minutes and 57 seconds on a complex project render versus 7 minutes and 9 seconds and 9 minutes and 1 second respectively for the M2 and M1 Max. My conclusion here is if you work a lot in motion graphics then the M3 Max is definitely a fantastic investment. Moving over to Adobe Dimensions, the performance gap isn't quite as large, especially when you look at rendering the scenes out, and I have to assume that is because Adobe Dimensions relies on the CPU for rendering, and the difference in CPU between all of the generations of MacBook is not as great of a leap as the GPU is. This means if your professional workflow heavily relies on CPU performance, then you honestly really couldn't go wrong with any of these laptops. Switching over to Final Cut Pro, 
all three of these laptops have excellent encoding and decoding engines built directly into the silicon. So timeline performance on all three of these machines is buttery smooth, regardless of what resolution video and effects you're using. The same can be said for exporting your timeline. H.264 and ProRes aren't remarkably different in terms of export time, and so time will tell whether there's going to be a performance gap between the M3 Max and the older silicon. I can, however, pretty confidently say that if you are currently editing on or thinking about getting an M1 Max or M2 Max machine and your workflow primarily consists of Final Cut, I don't think you're missing out by not upgrading or if you can get a good deal on an M1 or M2 Max device, I would say definitely go for that. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I really tried to showcase software that not only do I see folks have a lot of questions about online, but software that I use all of the time myself. From the posting of this video, I've had the M3 Max machine for about a week, and the M1 and M2 Max devices I've had since launch and have been editing most of my videos on them. I'm currently in the process of creating a new intro with after effects and adobe illustrator and i've been doing all of that on the m3 max and i have to say that it is definitely a powerhouse if you're currently using anything other than one of the apple silicon machines such as one of apple's intel based machines and your budget allows it i would definitely say upgrade to the m3 max i would also say the same if you were using an m1 machine and your workflow consisted of heavy gpu based applications like Blender or motion graphics applications like After Effects. Otherwise, if you already have an Apple Silicon machine or you can find a really good deal on one, the M1 Max and M2 Max are still very powerful machines and, as you can see from a lot of these tests, still very powerful in most applications. I really appreciate you stopping by the channel and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.